What's up, church fam? Hey, man, this is Jonathan. Uh, just sitting here at the church. We're just going to bring you a little message. We tried, man. This is the second time that I've recorded this. We tried last Wednesday night to do it on the phone, and uh, it just took forever to download, and we wasn't being able to do it. And it was like the devil was just pounding us, not wanting us to get us out. But, hey, man, we're not giving up. Uh, we just want to tell you, youth, we love y'all, man. We miss y'all. We miss seeing you and in your faces. But know that we're thinking about you. We're praying for you every day. Um, not just the youth, but whoever, whoever this message is for, man. God's given me a message. Um, I've been praying about it, and, and, and there's somebody out there that needs to hear this. Um, so tonight I want to talk about it. And I, I had no idea that that Pastor Chuck had already preached on this, but but tonight I, I want to I want to preach on I want to speak on our choice, our choice to choose faith or our choice to choose fear. You see, we have a choice. We're living in a society that is is just gripped by fear this this virus that that has that has just swiped across the world has has just caused fear to run wild it's it's the fear of of death it's the fear of running out of food it's the fear of of the unknown the fear of the unknown has frightened everybody it's made everybody go crazy you see but we have a choice we have a choice to make um, whether we give in to the fear or we stand on our faith. You see, fear and faith both ask you to believe in something that you cannot see. You see, faith asks us to believe in a God that we've never physically seen. And fear wants us to believe in an ending that we haven't seen. So they both ask you to believe in something that you can't see. I believe that our decisions mostly are made upon what we're feeding our soul, what we're feeding our spirit, what we're feeding our mind, what we're feeding our eyes, our ears. And, and you may ask, what, what are you talking about, Jonathan? I'm talking about the music that we listen to, the, the news that we, that we watch, the movies that we watch, the things that we intake on a regular basis. We're feeding, we're feeding our spirit. We're either feeding our spirit of faith or sp feeding our spirit of fear. You see, social media, the news, there's never reported anything hardly ever good. It's always bad. It's always to incite fear. Hey, this is going on. This is happening. If you do this, this is going to happen. We are raising people up in, in, in just a, a fear mentality that, that nothing good ever happens in the world. We're allowing outside I don't want to say forces, but we are outside influence our decisions, our choices. We might fear, man, what if I get sick? What if that virus hits my family? What happens if I lose my job? What happens if I'm not accepted at school? What happens if People make fun of me for what I believe. What about, I know I want to do right, but everybody else is doing this. The fear of, of, of not, of being rejected. The fear of failing. You see, fear has got a way of creeping in everyone's life. Fear has got a way, a lot of times, of kind of pushing our faith down. We're always, always giving in to fear, it seems like, as a country. I'm not all surprised because of what is put out there for us to, to see, to listen to. It, 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 it's, it's, we're living in a world where faith has been removed and fear has been put in its spot. We take in and we believe whatever's told to us. You hear people all the time say, well, man, did you hear about this? Well, I read it on Facebook. You see, we're living our life by what Facebook says. 
When we should be living our life what the good book says. God has given us the directions and the instructions on what to do when things get hard. None of this is new to God. God's a sovereign God. God's not taken by surprise by this, by this coronavirus. He, he's, he's not up there going, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? No, no, no. God doesn't have a plan B. God is in control. He is sovereign. That means he has almighty power. He's never out of control. You know, I heard this thing today. I heard a guy say that, that maybe we've put everything in the place of God. Maybe our sports, maybe we started worshiping sports too much. Guess what? He canceled all the sports seasons. Maybe we've started loving our actors and our movies and our TV shows too much. Guess what? He's canceled all that. Or what about this? Maybe we started loving our money and our jobs and, and, and our earthly things too much. And God said, what about this? I'll take that too. You see, maybe this whole virus is set up to bring us back to a place where we need to be. And that's a place where we don't stand on fear anymore, but we stand strong in our faith. We've let the outside, we've let the world influence us in such a way that we've pushed God. We've pushed him away from where we used to be. We filled it up with everything else. And maybe this is a way of him just stripping away. The busyness of life, stripping away the things that consume your mind. And he's knocking and he's saying, hey, remember me? Now that nobody knows what they're going to do with this virus, guess what? Come back to me, I know. You see, fear is nothing new. I mean, the Bible speaks on fear many, many times. There's, 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 there's so many verses and so many things on fear not or do not be afraid. It's all throughout the Bible. There's nothing, there's fear and, and, and even, even people in God's time, people, people in the Bible times, even the people that were closest to God gave in to fear sometimes over faith. So my question is this, how do we choose faith over fear every time? How do we choose faith over fear every time? Well, here's what I would do. I would get off Facebook. I would get off TikTok. I might get off all my social media and I go back to God's word, to the Holy Bible, to the living word and see what he's got to say about it. You see, faith is, isn't just believing a certain way, but it's living a certain way. Faith is knowing that no matter what's going on in this world, that my God's got me, my God's bigger. There's nothing I'm going to come up against that my God can't handle. You see, we're trying to please the wrong people. We're trying to be accepted by the wrong people. We're getting advice from the wrong people. The Bible has a lot to say about fear. Fear not is recorded 60 times in the King James Version. Do not be afraid is recorded 77 times. You see, God's got something to say about it. I believe the antidote for fear is faith. I believe the antidote for all of our problems, everything that we're scared of, all the uncertainty I believe it's faith. You see, I love going to the Bible and, and these stories in the Bible. One of my favorite, man, is, is, is about this little boy named David. And you want to talk about fearless, man. There was this little boy named David. He was just a young teenager. And he goes to carry food. He goes to carry food to his, his brothers that are, in the, that are in this army and they're, and, and they're battling out on the battlefield. And the, and, and the enemy's got this giant. Some, some of it says, some people say that was, he was eight foot tall. He had killed hundreds of men. And for 40 days, 40 days, that giant had taunted and taunted and he picked at. And he, and he just scared to death the army. And it takes a boy, faith field, to walk onto the battlefield. And he says, you know what? I'll take him. 
I'll take him out. And they said, no, David. The king said, no, David. I'll tell you what, David. Let me give you my finest armor. And David said, I don't need your armor. You see, David had something inside of him that, that, that conquered fear that, that there, there was nothing that was going to stand in his way. Not even an eight foot giant that had murdered hundreds of men. You see, David walked out on faith with a slingshot and five stones. He slayed a giant. You see, it wasn't the stones. It wasn't the, the slingshot that killed Goliath. It was David's faith in God. You see, David said God had, God had, God had rescued, had saved him. Uh, David had killed a bear. He had killed a lion. So in David's mind, there was nothing I was going to face. There was never a question about, is God going to come through? That if I stand out on this field, that he's going to allow me to die. His faith was stronger than his fear. Listen to me. And what about Daniel? <laughs> You're talking about not caring what anybody thought, not worrying about what his friends thought or what the other people thought or what the world was going to say. I'm going to stand up and I'm going to pray to my God. And the king says, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to throw you into the lion's den. You know, I have to, I have to wonder as, as they was dragging him to the lion's den, to this pit that was in the floor and throwing him down to these hungry lions. I have to wonder, was he just singing? Was he scared? I know, I, I know that his that his fear didn't overtake his faith because he could have easily said, "Okay, okay, okay, I'm sorry, I, I, I'll do what you want me to." But he didn't. He allowed him to throw him into the lines. And you know this story if you don't. When the king came back to check on him the next night, the next day. David was down there. He was alive. The lions didn't touch him. You see, his faith in his God was greater than the faith that those, I mean, the fear that those lions were going to eat him. And then you got the three brothers with the crazy names, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Same type story. There was a king who wanted to be worshipped. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they weren't going to bow down for anybody but their God. They weren't going to bow down for a king or a, or a statue or anything like that. And he said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to throw y'all into a fiery furnace. He said the furnace was so hot that the men would go up to it and they, they would just, it, they would burn up. But guess what? They, they too could have easily just stepped back and said, whoa, 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 okay, never mind, never mind. But they didn't. They stood on their faith and trusted that God would deliver them. And as they put them in there, the king says, didn't I put three in there? I see four people. You see, God was in that fire with them. God had sent an angel to be in that fire with them. You see, it's examples all the way through the Bible of people trusting the word of God, not the word of Facebook, not social media, not what their friends at school said or your co-workers at work. They're trusting the living word of our God that says, I will never forsake you. I'll never leave you. Following Jesus at times can become uncomfortable. It can, it can cost you. You will have to make sacrifices. You might have to lose friends. There's things you have to give up. And I've shared this many a times that my favorite Bible verse when I was getting my life back right was Luke 9, 23. And, and there's a group of people sitting around Jesus and they said, Jesus, what does it take to follow you? And he says, if, if you want to follow me, first you must deny yourself. You must pick up your cross daily and follow me. 
You see what Jesus is saying? In order to follow him, it's going to, it's going to take sacrifice. It's going to take you denying what you want to do. It's going to take you denying your flesh and the things that you want. You're going to pick up that cross and you're going to die to yourself daily. And you're going to follow him. It's a hard thing to do for some people to give up the things you really want or the dreams that you have or to step out on faith and know that Jesus has got you. But I promise you this, I've never met somebody that gave their life to Christ that ever come back to me and said, Jonathan, I wish I wouldn't have done that. You see, Jesus said he did not come to this earth. He didn't come here to, to, to make our lives hard. He didn't come here to convict us. He didn't come here to condemn us. No, Jesus said, I came to this earth so I could give you life abundantly. But because of, of, of what we're taking in, into our minds and into our soul, a lot of times it's easier just to give in to fear than to stand on our faith because of the unknown. We're at a time in, in our generation that we've never seen. We're in a time when people are scared to, to go out into public. They're scared to have conversations with people. They're scared for people to breathe, to cough, because they're scared of the unknown. I want to read to you from the book of Mark. The thing I love about Jesus is the stories in this Bible and, and the stories that his disciples and the people went through. The reason the Bible's called a living word is because it's still going on today. It still, it still speaks into your life and, and, and by example, you can, you can learn from it. And, and Jesus and, and his disciples, they had been over um, by the Sea of Galilee. They had been, they had been preaching and they had been and sharing God's word with these people. And, and Jesus said, Jesus was done. He had he, become tired and he said, look, here's what I want to do. He said, I want us to get in this boat and I want us to go across, across the lake, across the sea, what they called it. We would call it a lake now. And so they get in a boat. And if you've got your Bible, I'm reading Mark um, 4, 35 through 41. Mark 4, 35 through 41. 35 says, and on the same day when evening had come, Jesus said to them, let's cross over to the other side. Now, when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling But he, talking about Jesus, was in the stern. He was asleep on a pillow. And they woke him. And they said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we're perishing? Some other translation says, Do you not care that we're going to drown? That we're dying? Then Jesus arose and he rebuked the storms and he said to the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Verse 40 says, and he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? You see, these disciples were experienced fishermen. When Jesus had called them to be his disciples, the, the Bible says they laid down their nets. They just, they walked away from everything. You see, they had fished in the Sea of Galilee for many, many years. And, and, and it was known for storms just to come up. So they had been through storms. But, but as I'm reading this and, I, and, and I'm studying on it, that this storm had to be something, something unexpected. It had to be something that was bigger than anything they had faced before. It said the, the water was coming over the boat. The boat was filling up. I can see them getting tossed from side to side. And, and in their mind, in that moment, when this came from nowhere and they weren't waiting on it, they thought in that 
that moment they were going to die. But you see, they had the solution to the storm in the boat with them. You see, when the storm came and, and, and things started getting crazy and things started getting out of hand and, and they didn't know which way to turn, the, the, their faith their faith shrunk for a minute and fear overtook them. And so they run up there and they wake Jesus up. Jesus, Jesus, come on, man. Do you know we're fixing to die? And Jesus stood up. And this is what I love, man. This is what I love about our God. That he told the storm to be still. You see, he stopped the storm. And his question to his disciples was, where is your faith? You see, Jesus and the disciples had been spreading his message. These disciples had been with him. They're, they're seeing miracles be done. They know he's the son of God. They bought into this. They're living with him. They're, they're doing miracles. They're seeing him heal people. They're doing this. But when a storm comes out of nowhere, they, 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 it's like they forgot about all that. It's like they didn't know what was going on and they were scared to death. They forgot that they had Jesus, the creator, the God of this world, the king of kings, the solution to any problem you have. They had him in the boat. How many of you today, how many of us out there, maybe a storm's come into your life. I'm not talking about this virus. I'm talking about financial. I'm talking about relationships. I'm talking about life has hit you and knocked you down. Maybe you've been in church. Maybe you haven't. Maybe you've been in church and you've seen God work in other people's lives. And as this storm come in and it's hitting your family and this sickness has hit you or this financial hard time has hit you or this relationship problems has hit you. Man, you have forgotten that you have got the king of kings in the boat with you. We have a God that loves us. We have a God that says, I'll tell you what. I love you this much. And as they nailed him to the cross. And as he died for you and me. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. You see, Jesus came down and became the perfect sacrifice for the opportunity sorry about that for an opportunity that we might choose him. You see, he's chose us. But because of what we fill our minds with and, and, and because of what we fill our, 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 our hearts and our spirits with and, and, and what consumes our time, a lot of times we forget that we've got the solution to our storm. You see, what happens is we allow these storms of life to build up and they become bigger and bigger and bigger. But let me assure you, there's never a storm we're going to face <laughs> that's bigger than our God. You see, Fear says this. Fear says, what if? Where faith says, even if. Fear says, what if they think I'm weird? What if I fail? What if I get sick? Faith says, even if, I, even if they make fun of me. Even if I get sick. Even if I fail. 
You see, if we would practice daily feeding our faith, listen to me, this is good. If you, if you hear anything, listen to me. If you practice daily feeding your faith, then your fear will starve to death. Fear is faith in reverse. Fear is faith in reverse. Now's the time. You see, God's kind of pushed the pause button on life for a lot of us. Um, he's caused us to go uh, change up our daily habits, our daily ways. No school, no sports. You know, we're doing church this way, which is awesome, man. I'm praying that, that more people besides just our church will be touched by the by the Spirit of Spirit of God. But today is the time that you start feeding your faith. Today's the day that you get off Facebook and you get into God's book. Today's the day that you quit believing what you read on social media and you start believing what you read in God's word. Today's the day you start feeding your faith and slowly but surely your fears start to starve yourself to death. We need to consume as much of Christ as we can. You see, it's our choice. Do we choose faith or do we choose fear? You see, we serve a sovereign God, an all-powerful God, an all-knowing God, that nothing that we face, he's not in control of. He never loses control. He never stops loving you. I don't care how far you've pushed yourself away from God. I don't care how far you've run. We've got a God that loves you. We've got a God that, that says, stand on my word. You see, God's word says this. In 2 Timothy, Timothy excuse me, verse 1. For God has not given us a spirit of fear or a spirit or a, or a spirit of being timid, but of power, of love and self-discipline. My question to you tonight, and I'm a finish. Is from this day forward, what do you choose? Do we choose to believe the word of the creator of the great almighty or do we choose to listen to the fear that's being pushed into our lives I'm praying this man I'm just I really was praying about this message and I'm, I promise you man it's it's really it's worked on me but I pray somebody needed to hear this somebody knows that today is the day that you choose the Lord today's the day that uncertainty doesn't matter. There's one thing to be certain of. That if you are a child of the living God. That one day you will spend the rest of your life in eternity with him. That if you are a child of the living God. No matter what happens. You're victorious. You win. Church family. We love you. Thank you for taking the time out and listening to this. And there's going to be many more messages, more videos. We're going to be putting them on our YouTube page and, and share them with whoever needs to hear them. Man, it's an easy way to spread God's word. But just know this. Your pastors, your leaders here, Calvary Baptist Church loves y'all. And so does God. See you.